Your cinematography skills are crucial for getting professional results out of Blender. Knowing some basic camera techniques can really help improve your project. So let's take a deep dive into cameras and some neat camera tricks. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. Before diving into some cool techniques, let's talk about the basics of a camera in the real world and 3D cameras in Blender. In the real world, a camera mainly consists out of two parts, a body and a lens. Now, don't get me wrong, these things can look like absolute transformer units, but yeah, in the basis, this makes up a camera. The body determines things like recording resolution, sensor quality and size, FPS, shutter speed, and the dynamic range. The lens, on the other hand, determines the focal length, aperture, which is expressed in f-stops, and the field of view. Now, why is this information relevant? Well, because a lot of it translates into Blender, but also a lot of it doesn't. If we compare the two, a camera object in Blender offers things like focal length and aperture, but none of the other things. So if you want to change your FPS, for example, you can't do that inside of your camera. You have to do that inside of the output properties. And also there is basically no limit to the FPS like a real world camera would have. Now the dynamic range is the range of values a camera can perceive in either direction starting at a middle gray tone and is expressed in stops. For some time now we have been using filmic color management by default in Blender which has 25 stops of range. And just to put this in comparison this is even higher than our eyes' estimated 15 to 20 stops of range. The only thing here is do make sure that your color management is set to filmic and not standard because standard has only 8 stops of range. Now shutter speed is basically the amount of light your camera lets in. So for example, a shutter speed of 1 over 80 means that the shutter will open and close once every 80th of a second. Blender doesn't have a shutter speed since, you know, Blender's camera doesn't have shutters. However, shutter speed is important for real life cameras for a multiple of reasons, but also because it creates motion blur. Now in Blender, we have a separate function for motion blur, which we can just toggle on or off. And in this tab, we can set the amount of motion blur that we want by just increasing or decreasing the value. The shutter value mimics the shutter speed of a real world camera. So setting this value lower means a faster shutter speed and a higher value means a slower shutter speed. So these are the basics of a camera in Blender and how it is compared to a real one. Now let's dive deep into some cool tricks to level up your cinematography skills. Rack focus. Rack focus is essentially a change of the focal point and depth of field in a scene. It's a common technique in cinematography to tell the viewer where to look and usually reveals some crucial piece of information. For example, in this shot that I created, the rack focus is used to convey that you're not just looking at some random field of grass, but in actuality there's someone's remains lying in the grass. And so we can use this to tell a story and set the mood for our shot. Now it's very simple to do in Blender. Just select your camera and set it up the way you want, keyframe your positions and rotation, etc. for the shot as you want it. Now we just add in an empty and set the depth of field target of our camera to that empty. Now decide on an f-stop that works for your scene, usually I'd go for something that an actual camera can produce, and just keyframe the location of your empty to create the rack focus effect. Super simple. By the way, if you want access to the project files used in this video, feel free to join the Patreon. And at the same time, you'll help out the channel as well. Dolly Zoom. The dolly zoom is a well-known shot type to represent a sense of vertigo or a feeling of unreality. And it's been around since it was first conceived by Alfred Hitchcock in the 1940s. Classically, the camera pulls away from the target while the lens zooms in or vice versa. This is what creates a continuous perspective distortion, which we call the dolly zoom. To do this in Blender, we simply add a camera and have it face our subject head on. Now we animate it moving back in a linear fashion. This this means linear interpolation for your keyframes, which you can get by just hitting T in the timeline and choosing linear. With the camera pulling away from our object, it's now a matter of keyframing the focal length of our camera to match the first and last frame of our animation in regards to our subject size. And by roughly matching these up, we get a decent looking dolly zoom in Blender. Now I've probably given you a couple of cool ideas to help you spice up your animations and videos, but you'll also need a place to showcase them. And that brings us to today's sponsor. Squarespace is the ideal platform for anyone looking to do just that. With Squarespace's intuitive website builder, you can create a website that truly captures the essence of your creative talent. Their customizable designs, plug and play animation features, and mobile responsive layouts make it easy to create a portfolio that stands out from the rest. Whether you're a filmmaker 
filmmaker, animator, or video editor, Squarespace offers everything you need to bring your portfolio to life. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and when you're ready to publish, head on over to squarespace.com slash Tutorials to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code Kaizen Tutorials. Thanks a lot to Squarespace for being a great sponsor and supporting the channel. Now let's get on with some more cool camera tricks. Empty camera control. If you have a product or target and can decide on a good camera angle, the simplest way to move your camera around it is by parenting it to an empty. Add in an empty and make sure it's in the same position as your desired target. Now place a camera in front of your target, just like you did for the dolly zoom, and select the camera and then the empty and hit Ctrl P to parent the two together. Now you can select your empty and hit R twice to get the trackball rotation. And with that, it's as simple as rotating around your object and getting a decent looking shot. Continuation of motion. Continuation of motion is not as much a camera trick as it is a visual concept that keeps the flow of your animations or videos going. The idea is that you want to have the motion in one shot continue on into the next. So let me give you an example. In this shot, the motion of the camera and product are downward with some rotation. In the next shot, even though there's a completely different camera angle, this motion continues and so the flow of the animation continues even though we get a different camera angle. Now this isn't something you want to do for every shot. You can keep it going for two or three shots and then break it up by going in a different direction for the next few shots. Or you can add a add-on steady shot to create a moment of rest between the more busy parts of your animation. Alternatively, you can also add contrast between shots by using opposed motion. Motion. Simply put, this means that if one shot goes up, the next one goes down. This creates a stark contrast grabbing the viewer's attention. Try not to overdo any of these things because it will create a jarring effect. Overall, a good animation has this wave-like pattern when it comes to the motion. You want some fast parts, you want some slow parts, and preferably a great combination of the two. Thanks to Not Important Studios for letting me use his work to showcase these concepts. Bokeh. Bokeh is the quality and feel of background or foreground blur and reflected points of light inside your renders. It's been one of the most popular camera tricks for ages and it's actually super easy to do inside a blender. So let me show you. Here I have a scene with some scattered lights in it. To create a bokeh, we'll first need to add depth of field. So enable this inside of your camera. Now we can just play with the focus distance in the aperture settings to change the amount of blur or bokeh in this case. That works perfectly and we can even animate it by keyframing this focus distance value. The other thing that we can do is give the bokeh a cool shape. We can do this by changing the amount of blades our aperture has. By default this is set to zero, which means infinite and results in a round bokeh shape. The minimum value for this field is three, resulting in a three-sided polygonal shape or, you know, a triangle. Four would obviously be a square, five a pentagon, six a hexagon, and so forth. Now, if you want to take this a little further, you can also add dirt and a custom bokeh shape, but you'll need an add-on like the Pro Lens 2 add-on to do just that. Camera Shakeify. If you haven't heard from this free add-on before, Get ready for me to rock your world. The Camera Shakeify add-on is a free tool designed by Ian Hubert, yes, that Ian Hubert, and Nathan Fegdal. It does as the name states and adds a shake to your cameras with just one click. By installing the add-on, you'll get a new tab on your camera properties where you can simply click on the plus icon to add realistic movement. There are several presets and by default it adds the investigation type noise. You can play around with these presets, but usually investigation works pretty well. The default strength is usually a bit too much though, but you can easily manipulate this to your liking by changing the influence and skill of values. My advice would be to keep it subtle for the best results and to not add it in for every shot as for example a tripod shot would never have this camera shaking motion. Are you ready to take what you've learned and put it into practice? That's awesome. But maybe you want to dive a little deeper into those sleek looking product animations. And if you do, I already have the perfect video for you. Finally, I want to express my thanks to all my awesome patrons as they really help support the channel.